Okay, welcome guys. A uh, quick screencast here just to go through a, an example of a mono-hybrid problem uh, and to go through a couple of worked examples. So first off here we have our, um, uh, uh, let's go through our terminology. We've got a mono-hybrid cross, mono meaning one, and hybrid being a cross between two things. Dihybrid being um, two different uh, characteristics. Mono-hybrid, we're just looking at one, and mono I like to think of mono and mono brows, one eyebrow, mono cycle, anything to do with one. Um, we're going to look at two different genes here that, um, in our sheep. Capital B will uh, be the gene that codes for uh, black, and the lowercase b is a recessive gene, and that's coding for white. And we and we need to when we have a dominant recessive relationship, we always express that in capital and lowercase. So with our sheep here, I suppose, um, each individual has two alleles for a gene. So our possibilities um, for our genotypes is to have two big alleles, which we call homozygous dominant, have one big and one small, which is the heterozygous, and two small, which is the homozygous recessive. Now the, the, the two... Um, homozygous individuals we can also call them purebred and it'd be the purebred dominant or the purebred recessive and this individual here which is the heterozygous we can also call that the hybrid instead of the heterozygous so you might see a couple of different terminologies there as we go through now um, a first example we might look at we'll, we'll look at let's say uh, homozygous dominant so big B, big B, and cross it with a heterozygous individual. And when we do these crosses, it's important to write out the genotypes of the parents, and it's important to write out the possible gametes underneath. Now, the possible gametes that we have for this individual will only be big B. They can eat, they could produce big B or big B. We can just say they're only going to be able to produce big B. The gametes for the heterozygous individual, they could produce big B, or the alternative allele or chromosome that they could pass on to the offspring through meiosis would be a small B. Okay? Now, these gametes that are produced in meiosis, this is what we represent along these sides of our Punnett square. So let's do this individual first. So he could supply big B, and he could supply another big B here, but you know there's no point really replicating it. Um, the heterozygous individual could supply a big B, or it could supply a small B. And as we go through and write these in, you know we we write them in big B, big B. So getting the big B from here and the and the big B from there. This individual gets a big B here from that parent and a small b from that parent. Okay. And th these, in these boxes, that, that, that represents the genotypes of the new offspring, so of, of the fertilized individuals. We write these, um, these um, ratios of the offspring in a genotype and then a phenotype ratio. The genotype telling me what sort of genes are present, the phenotype, what the physical characteristics actually look like. So let's go through. So first off, we'd have one, big B, big B, two, one, heterozygous individual, big B, small b. And when we write the phenotype ratio, we look at that and we go, well, that individual is going to look black. This individual is also going to look black. So we could write that out as all black okay and that's uh, you know uh, basically how we solve our monohybrid cross I might go through one more example um, of the heterozygous cross of crossing two heterozygous individuals so we we'll write out as usual we'll write out the genotypes of our parents okay the heterozygous so one of each Write out the gametes, very important to write out these gametes and get this clear. So big B or small B for this individual, they could either pass on that to the offspring or that. The parents don't pass on both, they pass on one or the other. Um, and again, same, same situation here. 
These transfer down onto a Punnett square, the sides representing the gametes that are produced in meiosis, the squares in the middle, potential offspring. So those, indivi those individuals to one side, these individuals to another. Now let's go through and solve these ones here. From one parent they get the big B, from the other parent they also get a big B. From one parent they get a small B, and other parent they get a big B. You may have noticed me write the big B first, and I think that's just a, a good habit to get into to keep yourself organised. From one parent they get the big B, from the other parent they get the small B. From one parent they get the small B, from the other they get the small B. Okay, so we've got our offspring here, our four possible combinations of offsprings. We write them out in a genotype ratio. How many of these do we have? One. So we have one big B, big B. We have two heterozygous individuals. So I'll write down two heterozygous individuals and one of the homozygous recessives, so small b, small b. Okay, and the phenotype ratio is basically what they look like. And if we look through our individuals in our genotype ratio, we can pretty well pick that one. This individual is going to appear black, and these two are also going to appear black, and we have one white individual here. So we'd have three that appear black, two, one, white individual. Now, we, we could also write this down as, you know, 75% black, 25% white, or you could write down as three quarters, or one to one quarter. And it's important to be able to work in all those different options. Um, one thing worth pointing out is that it is, it is chance. It's a, a, a one in three chance of turning out right, white, or a 25% chance of turning out white. It's not guaranteed, it means um, that, that's the likelihood of it happening. If you've had one white individual, you've still got a 25% chance of having another, and next time that the uh, sheep have a baby, they've got a 25% chance again. Okay. Um, well, that's it for monohybrid crosses. Um, it's important to get these down uh, quite good before you move on to the, the next stage and, and looking at other forms of inheritance. It's a, a really good grounding uh, for your, your solving your genetics problems. Good luck.